Armoff. It's a fragrance name that a lot of people despise. As soon as they hear the name, they just cringe inside and uh, rage builds up inside of them. For other people, they hear the name Armoff and they think, hey, nice, affordable quality. Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope you're doing really well. Today I'm going to be going over five different fragrances from Armoff that I think are actually worth picking up even if maybe you're not a huge Armoth fan. So let's jump into it and I'll let you guys know why I think each one of these is actually worth checking out. Now before I get started with the first fragrance in this list, I'm gonna let you know really quickly what Armoth is in case for some reason you are unaware. Armoth is a Middle Eastern fragrance house that is most well known for cloning or making inspired by versions of much more popular and usually more expensive fragrances. So a clone brand, essentially, that's what they are. They take fragrances that already exist and they release their version of it, usually for a much lower price. Now, our moth's quality is sometimes dubious. Some of the absolute worst fragrances I have ever smelled in my life are from our moth. And I'm not saying that to be dramatic, I'm not saying that to be uh, kind of taking shots at our moth, if you will. They have some fragrances that are terrible, horrible. But then they do have some fragrances that are pretty good, sometimes surprisingly good, actually. So our moth is hit or miss. About the only thing that you're assured of when you buy an our moth fragrance is that you're gonna get a really tacky, gaudy bottle. That's guaranteed. Okay, let's finally get started. First fragrance. Club de Nuit Intense Man. Just kind of have to get this one out of the way first. Now, if you can find this one, the limited edition Eau de Parfum, I suggest picking this one up, but it is harder to find than just your standard Club de Nuit Intense Man. And another thing to keep in mind here is that not all Club de Nuit Intense Man fragrances that are an Eau de Parfum are the limited edition Eau de Parfum. Trying to break this down super simply, this bottle here of Club de Nuit Intense Man that I have, this is an Eau de Toilette, but they also have Club de Nuit Intense Man as an Eau de Parfum now. Exact same bottle, everything the same. This is Club de Nuit Intense Man. It is an Eau de Parfum, says right on the front, but it also says limited edition. So that's what you're looking for. Not the Eau de Parfum part, the limited edition part. That one is basically just a little higher quality than this one, in my opinion. It's a little bit smoother, a little bit richer, smells overall nicer. Back to this one, Club de Nuit Intense Man. This, in case you're unaware, is a clone of Creed Aventus and is the most popular, most worn Creed Aventus clone on the market. Since this is a clone of Creed Aventus, most of the notes are gonna be just Creed Aventus notes. The opening here is really divisive. Some people hate it, some people actually really like it. It does smell a little bit harsh. It has kind of a chemical cleaner smell to it. The lemon in this especially doesn't smell that nice in the opening. After it settles in though, people swear by this fragrance. Once it hits that dry down, huge compliment puller, massive performance, lasts a long time, projects very heavily, and has a bunch of versatility, just like Creed Aventus. This one's gonna get you that Aventus feel, just much, much more affordable. And uh, some people actually say that they prefer this to Creed Aventus. Me personally, I'll take the Creed, but anytime you're talking about a, an Armoff list, I feel like, you gotta bring that one up. All right, next up, this is kind of a twofer. Club de Nuit Siage, Club de Nuit Milestone. Yeah, more Club de Nuit. Now, while this one and this one are both really good releases in the Club de Nuit line, Club de Nuit Urban Man, that one sucks. So don't just blindly buy up every Club de Nuit fragrance from Arm Off. That one is not worth owning. It is kind of a Mr. Burberry clone. Mr. Burberry Eau de Parfum mixed with Eau de Toilette, if I remember correctly. Yeah, not good. These are more Creed clones. This one, Siage, is a clone of Silver Mountain Water, and this one, Milestone, is a clone of Millicene Imperial. And I'll tell you guys, actually, that Club de Nuit Siage is much closer to Silver Mountain Water, and Milestone is much closer to Millicene Imperial than the original Club de Nuit Intense Man is to Creed's Aventus. Club de Nuit Intense Man, yes, it's an Aventus style fragrance, but if you compare it one to one with Aventus, there's lots of things that you can pick out differently between the two. These though are really close 
to what they're trying to emulate. So realistically, if you're looking for the most affordable, best alternative to Millicene Imperial and Silver Mountain Water by Creed, these, these are what you need to check out. Up next, our moth, niche oud, niche quality. Spices, amber, vanilla, and leather are some of the notes in the fragrance, and this bears more than a passing similarity to Ombre Sultan from Serge Luton. And this one, Niche Oud, is the one that stands out from the line the most for me, from the Armoff Niche line. It is actually surprisingly really good. I didn't think it was gonna be that nice. I sprayed it on and it's a really, really pleasant, spicy, warm, vanilla, sweet fragrance, perfect for fall and winter time. As I said, with the similarity to the Serge Luton, this is more of an amber fragrance than it is an Oud fragrance. So don't go into this expecting a powerful oody note or a, a really powerful woodiness in the base because you're not gonna find it. You're gonna get more of a, a resinous, sweet, warm, inviting type of scent. You've got nothing animalic in here at all. Really pleasant, super easy to wear. Like I said, more of a cool weather fragrance. And that one sometimes, depending on where you find it, it's a little more expensive than the other ones on this list. Let's go with, uh, yeah, another Creed clone. So. We've actually got a lot of Creed clones on here. This one is Tre Nui. And this fragrance is a clone of Creed's Green Irish Tweed, which is my favorite Creed ever. Lemon Verbena, Lavender, Ambergris, and Iris are some of the notes in the fragrance. Like a typical Armagh fashion, kind of a, a weird bottle where it's in this triangular shape and then has a leather belt that wraps around it. Kind of weird. Not the, the easiest one to hold in your hand sometimes, but uh, as far as our moth bottles go, it's okay. So this one's gonna be very green and fresh, but this one differs a little bit from Green Irish Tweed for me in that off my skin, this one is noticeably sweeter than Green Irish Tweed. And for a while, my wife actually preferred the way this smelled over Green Irish Tweed which is complete blasphemy. Because when I first got this in, I wore it side by side with Green Irish Tweed, had her smell them both, and uh, yeah, this one won. That was years ago, so maybe it'd be differently now. Maybe. And this one, I believe from memory, is the cheapest of the bunch. You can typically find this at discounters right around 20 bucks, sometimes even less. So that's like 10%-ish the price of Green Irish Tweed. Now this of course is not the only cheap alternative to Green Irish Tweed. There's also Davidoff Cool Water, there's Cody Aspen, there's, there's a number of them out there. But this one is very nice quality and for the price is a great pickup. And last up, we're gonna go with this one, the pride of our moth. So in my opinion, this one and this one probably are the least tacky bottles out of this list. Y'all let me know which one's better. Pride of our moth, Nishud, which one? This has lemon, cinnamon, vanilla, and tonka. And even though those notes don't really sound like it, this is actually our moth's take on Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum. Some people will also tell you it's a good alternative to Luna Rosa Carbon, which is of course by Prada. The reason that it's a good alternative to Luna Rosa Carbon as well is because Luna Rosa Carbon is in itself Prada's take on Dior Sauvage. So this is gonna get you a similar feeling to those fragrances, which means it's a big compliment puller, it's very versatile, very easy to wear. And this is not actually the only Dior Sauvage-esque fragrance from our moth. There's also Ventana, which is gonna give you a Dior Sauvage vibe, so you could buy both of those fragrances, Ventana and the Pride of Our Moth, and have two Sauvage-style fragrances from the same house. Now with this being in our moth and not being very expensive, and being a take on Sabaj, you might think, mm, it's probably gonna be pretty rough around the edges, maybe too aggressive in the opening, too harsh, too chemically, but it's actually really smooth. You'd think maybe they would have gone for something different to be the pride of our moth instead of just Sabaj, but it works. If you're looking for compliments, if you're looking for versatility, if you're looking for something that you can wear pretty much anywhere, anytime that people are gonna love, this one will get the job done for you and the bottle is a little bit restrained compared to some other Armoffs. So those are my five choices for Armoff fragrances that are actually worth buying. They're actually worth the price. 
There are some other Armov releases out there that are pretty good that I didn't include in this video and maybe I'll cover those in the future. And there, like I said at the beginning, are some Armov fragrances that are really, really bad and are not worth it if somebody tries to give it to you for free. So maybe I'll cover those too in the future. Ugh. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me. As always, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.